Hi, good morning, everybody. Surprise visit uh, from Bruno and I on a Friday morning. Bruno, it's not every day that the lawyers get out on a Friday morning, right? This is no, a special. This is very one. unusual. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. How are you doing? I'm all right. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Looking forward to the weekend. I think it's been a, a hectic um, yeah. week for, for both of us. I, I know for you, Absolutely. even yeah. a little more crazy. <laughs> right, yeah, and I don't think next week's going to be any better, but at least the, the break over the weekend might just do the trick. Exactly. I think this upliftment of the state of disaster means uh, uh, all of us will have to jump a little extra to uh, yeah. just re every time something changed, everybody's like, ah, panicky, and the lawyers get tired. So, uh, and I I think yeah, absolutely, yeah. And I suppose that's the whole, that's the whole reason for today is the fact that there's a lot of panic every single time there was a, I mean, we started, we started PLA because of the changes to the regulations. Um, and every time there was a change and there was a family meeting, there was panic and, and and so yeah we're back i suppose now we're doing the winding down from the uh, the COVID regulations and how that actually looks um yeah how that actually looks to 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 the south africans so it's actually a lovely celebration for us um thank you for for you know doing this thing with me it's actually a, it's actually a cool story now that you mentioned it we've been together from the start of lockdown and now we're on the other yeah. side and now we need to explain a lot of things so uh yeah thank you i absolutely. actually think it's a cool story yeah that is okay so for the benefit of our viewers uh bruno and i why we're doing a friday session is it's not our normal pla sessions not our normal wednesday webinars where we take questions and and respond with regards to property law exclusively we've decided to do a special edition um Surround, uh, around how law is made and what does it mean to have legislation, draft legislation? When, when is something an act? When does an idea become law? And I will say this, and, and everybody will have to now forgive me, but uh, I think everybody that's ever been in a conversation with me for more than two minutes would know that I am one of the most patriotic people that you have ever met. And I love South Africa um, super, super much. And if there's anything that I can ever do is to just educate people and, and, and help around fear. Because the truth is the only thing that you can use to fight fear is fact. And uh, I am famous for my fact checking. And uh, I promise whenever Bruno and I discuss anything, whether it's this conversation or anything else, um, we return to fact. And I think Bruno, you agree with me, that's a lawyer thing. Um, we yeah. have a way of, of spotting facts to mm. almost set, uh, almost used your initials here, um, which by the way is BS, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, none of that from Bruno, but uh, we need to spot facts from yeah. drama. So uh, I think all lawyers are serious fact checkers. I know it irritates people, but bear with us. Um, fact takes fear away. So, We've decided to do this. Uh, we'll discuss in a little bit more detail two particular pieces of regulations um, that's causing chaos and freak out right now. But we decided, let's explain how law is made. When does a concept become law? Where, where do we go from draft to law? And when does it become enforceable? So very quickly, Bruno, and I need you to please uh, check me and jump in where I miss things. But basically, the long and the short of the story is we have different departments of government. So the cabinet consists, look at me, I'm, I feel like a constitutional law lecturer right now. I, I hope my constitutional law lecturer way back when at the University of Pretoria is very proud right now. Thank you so much. For I'm, sure and it is. I'm sure it is. law. Yeah. Honestly, I'm not 100% sure that I've attended one class, but yeah, we are now. <laughs> But okay, so how it works, our cabinet consists of different ministers and every minister, so your minister of health, your minister of human settlements, your, your minister of transport, everyone has a department under them. And your departments look very similar to a company. So your minister would be in the same seat as your CEO. And then you have other people 
um, uh, surrounding the minister. And one of the roles is your head of legal. So like in any other company, you have somebody that's responsible for the law. Now that person, every single day of the week will be a lawyer. You're not going to have a head of legal in the Department of Human Settlements or for that matter in the Department of Health or anything else. That is not a qualified lawyer. It doesn't necessarily mean it has to be an advocate or an attorney. As long as you are um, a qualified lawyer, and, and that's another conversation, we might this all the same. We have yeah, the same degree. Yeah. There's no difference between advocates and attorneys. The difference is that the way we practice our business models are different. Um, but what we study is exactly the same, contrary to popular belief. Um, <laughs> and all of us actually has right of appearance in the high court as well, by the way. But uh, I just had to throw that one in, right, Bruno? <laughs> <laughs> but no. uh, as soon as you have a LLB degree, you can be admitted as an advocate. And a lot of legal advisors are admitted advocates, but they're not necessarily with the bar council. Um, they, they, they have the same qualifications, and those um, are very often the legal advisors in, in, in uh, government as well. But it, it could very well be an advocate or an attorney from somewhere else. But the person with the final eye on, on regulations or legislation will be a lawyer, I can promise you. It's not random person X that they like, oh, look at you. You look like you can read. Come, it's, it's lawyers. And we are, we are well trained when it comes to these things. And what happens then is every um, department has a parliamentary committee. Because remember, our legislation gets made in parliament. So we have three spheres of government. We have the legislature, that is parliament. Then we have uh, ju the uh, judiciary. Sorry, I just want to close this one. We have the judiciary, which is the courts. And then we have the executive authority, um, which is the police and those guys. So the judiciary, fun fact, which is the courts, and the legislature, which is parliament, is not the same sphere of government. It's actually a completely separate thing. And the reason for this is something amazing in terms of our, um, of our law is we have separation of powers. And the reason why we have that is if one is pulling shenanigans, that was a lovely term, Bruno, if one of the spheres might have some shenanigans going, there will always be another one that has oversight. So basically, the reason why we have three spheres of government is so we have um, like the equilibrium. Trust. Yes, yeah. and, and like checks yeah. and balances. And the yeah. Constitutional Court is the highest power in our country. Fun fact, our Chief Justice, which is now um, ju uh, uh, Chief Justice uh, Zondu, he is actually your chief justice in South Africa because we are a constitutional government and our constitution is the basis of our, of our law and our functioning of society. Our chief justice um, carries, and I say this with respect to, to uh, our president, um, our chief justice in a very big way carries more power than our president. Um, uh, well, obviously, the president appoints the chief justice, but the buck stops with our chief justice, which is why, guys, please pray for our chief justices. It's a hectic job to sit in, and I must say, I'm very excited that it's uh, Justice Zondu. Um, he's an amazing, amazing judge, and uh, I think he's got a massive um, job, but the buck pretty much stops with your chief justice, because whatever happens out of parliament, and, and the president's the head of parliament, Whatever happens from there has oversight from the Constitutional Court. And the Constitutional Court, with the 11 judges there at any time, can say, whoa, 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 guys, what's happening here? And this is basically mm -hmm. why it's not a crisis to see draft regulations that you don't like. What it means is we publish legislation, uh, and it's from Parliament, it's from the parliamentary committees. And they say, okay, guys, we think this is a good idea. Here is our draft regulations or our draft act or whatever. We invite public comment. The cloak and dagger stuff, guys, this is yeah. because um, <clears throat> you, 
when you get your advice and information from social media, it is super cloak and daggery. But let me show you how uncloak and daggered it is. Can I do it? Bruno, can I show them yeah. how uncloak and daggery it is? Absolutely. Okay, so um, if you go, let me just make sure I open the right window for you, yeah? Uh, I almost took you to, uh, to our Facebook page. Um, if you go to this website, so this website is called, wait for this, www.gov for government, .za. This is the South African government's website. All our legislation sits here. So here I was uh, looking for the Health Act, um, and we will talk about that just now because that's the one people are freaking out about. But let's, um, let's talk about the Rental Housing Act and the draft regulations to that. Look at that. On the 19th of March, it actually says Rental Housing Act regulations, comments invited. So what government is saying, listen, guys, we need your commentary on this so we have public participation because guess what we live in a democratic society meaning that we as the citizens of south africa is allowed to but not just allowed to call to, to get involved in the legislative process now what i always see is and bruno i smile about this because you will see things like posts on whatsapp groups and facebook and emails mm stop government and I'm like nobody has to stop government government is the ones that's coming out and saying hello Yella we want to publish this legislation we're busy with this legislation don't you guys please want to give your comment and get involved and look what it looks like it says okay yeah we uh, this is now to the rental housing act regulations published on the 13th of March, gazetted, it's public information. Nobody pays for this. You can, it's not because we lawyers, we have access to this. Like I'm dead serious. You type in www.gov.za mm. and it's there for everybody. Mm. And it says you can go through our, um, our draft documentation. If there's anything you don't like, please go have a look here. Here is a telephone number. These are actual people. It's not a robot or something. You can talk here to Rose or Lisa. There's their numbers. That's their address. There are their email addresses. If there's something in this legislation, suggested re legislation or regulations which form part of, of your um, act, please provide us with your commentary because it's important for us because we live in a democratic society. We want to hear what the citizens say. Whether it's the Rental Housing Act, whether it's the Health Act, whether it's whatever, if you do not comment and you do not participate, yes, there's going to be law that's going to make you sad. If there's yeah. law that gets promulgated and you feel it's unconstitutional, you do have the right as a citizen to go to the constitutional court and say, whoa, 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 listen, it wasn't done correctly. I know that there was a lot of commentary submitted to this department. It was not taken into consideration, but now guys, we need to distinguish between fact and rumor. Just because you know three people that are sad about something or upset about something does not mean they actually went through the effort to submit comments. I've heard so many times in my life uh, citizens that aren't uh, necessarily lawyers or even lawyers, I've heard this from lawyers as well, that says, I know of so many people that's upset about this legislation and still it got passed. And I say, okay, but where did you comment? Yeah. On Facebook. And I'm like, government doesn't have time to go to Facebook. That's not where we comment. It comments invited <clears throat> and they give you uh, the correct portals and, and communication methods um, to communicate legislation through. Once sure. they then receive that, the yeah. department head will have to consider that in consultation with the parliamentary committee. They then redraft, republish, and only at that time do, uh, will it get promulgated. And only once it's promulgated um, does it in fact become law. So there is usually not a massive reason to panic if you participate 
in uh, the functioning of the country. Okay, Bruno, just give a proper lawyer angle because people always say I'm overly positive about life. So just give us a, a lawyer sprinkle over what I just said. No, um, uh, look, you actually hit the nail on the head though because I, I very often have this conversation. So, you know, I do a lot of tax work. I go up against SARS all the time, um, especially with respect to tax disputes and planning and opinions and all of that. And the one conversation we always have with people, and it's exactly that. If you walk by someone on the street and ask, what's your perception of SARS? Their perception is, ah, oh, they're trying to steal our money, they're sharks, they're this. And it's like, well, no, actually, that's far from the case. SARS just happens to be a very well-administered wing from Treasury that has actually been quite effective in collecting rent, uh, in collecting, sorry, rent, in, in collecting tax. Um, we, we all wish we would be lucky if all our departments are run in the same way as SARS is. SARS isn't bad. SARS is just well capacitated. They've got good policies. They've got good regulations. Uh, the, the laws that they need passed get passed, and that's how they work. Don't make them your enemy, because at the end of the day, and this is the conversation that we're always having, as a tax authority, South Africa competes with other tax authorities in the world. SA needs money, but SA doesn't want you as a citizen to go abroad, because it's very easy for them to increase tax and say, you know what, everyone's going to pay now an extra 5%. It's very easy to do that, but they don't do that because they're still in competition. They're in a business to keep you in the country, but to still collect tax revenue. Now, what does this have to do with property? Exactly the same thing, all right? The, the people in these departments do have policies that they're trying to adhere to. Your issue isn't necessarily with the regulations. It might be with the policy. Um, some people aren't as pro-consumer, for example. Um, so, and, but that is a conflict. It's not a government issue, it is, but it is a conflict. That's, that's a political issue, in fact. Uh, that's, not, that, that's something that you need to go and make sure that on voting day, you vote for the party that, that shares your sentiments. Because we live in a society where there are differences of opinion. Uh, there's things that are very pro. So like, and we say it all the time with eviction law. Um, there's a lot of things that lean towards being pro occupy as an example, right? That I personally don't agree with. There's a lot of uh, criticism that I have. And, uh, but on the flip side of it, I understand why it's there. And as long as you're able to understand that and stop fighting it and kind of put yourself in the middle, take a deep breath, close your eyes and listen, listen to what's happening. Why is the policy there? Why are they doing is, take, for example, the Rental Housing Act, best example. There's a lease agreement um, uh, that, that's attached as a schedule. Now, I've had clients freaking out, lease agreement, and look at these terms, and now it, you, know, it, 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 you can't have it any different to this lease agreement. No, no one said that. Like, let's just relax. First of all, putting in a lease agreement, because there's unscrupulous landlords out there that refuse to sign lease agreements with tenants to begin with. Uh, nothing's properly documented. No one knows what's happening. I mean, we've had evictions. We've had evictions where we've got no clue. We're worried about going to court because we're taking our client's story and saying, this is what happened. But we know at the drop of a hat, the story could be the complete opposite. So putting a lease agreement there isn't attacking. Apologies. I think I'm getting a call. that does happen every now and again yeah uh especially when you uh, you're trying to do it on your phone like in between in between things um uh, so where was i uh, lost you said thought. it's not uh, nobody is attacking uh the existence of uh of lease agreements and there's no attack yeah. sort of on the industry yeah, exactly. it's a yeah. it's a regular you were there listen to me yeah. i actually focused Nice. Um, so, so things like that, and people need to realize this. What, what is the policy behind, the, the, the rationale behind things like this? Uh, legislation is introduced, regulations are secondary in nature, but they need to be there because they deal with detail. They take certain bad experiences, so they go to rental housing tribunals and ask, what have you noticed? Oh, these guys do this, these guys do this. How do we um, simplify it? How do we optimize it? We need a regulation. Maybe just you know, put a lease out there so that no one's confused and they know they can print it out and sign it. Something simple like that. 
That's why that's here. Now, the fact that these are draft regulations means that we can still comment on them. So this is where your involvement as the public helps. As long as you guys band together and go, we don't like this because of A, B, and C, certain definitions uh, we don't appreciate, uh, like landowner definition, um, you know, that speaks about agent or whatever. Let's have a conversation around it. Let's put it out there and say, and make the proposals and say it should be changed. That's why you've got the lawyers. That's why you've got things like PLA. That's why you've got these open invitations to go attend and give your thoughts. Um, so yeah, so, so from my side, it's exactly what Silna said. There is no lawyery answer. The reality is there's a political way of doing things. There's a systematized way of doing things. Uh, let's do it the right way. And it's going to be a lot easier. And you'll see changes because they do make changes. They're not, they don't want things to be irrational because remember, government's also not in the, in the business of going to court and fighting in the constitutional court. It's a headache. They don't want to put out legislation just to get, have it attacked later. If you can logically point out that something makes no rational sense and that it has to be changed, They've changed it. They've changed it plenty of times when we've done it. So everyone needs to just relax, breathe, Don't close your eyes, listen to what's happening around you and understand, is there a problem? But now on the flip side of this, I'm not saying be complacent mm -hmm. because there's also now us going calm down and everyone goes, oh, it's cool. Don't worry. It's just draft. Nothing's going to happen because that's exactly what happened with a lot of the, uh, some regulations where no one paid attention. I assumed Solna was looking at it. Solna assumed I was looking at it. No one paid attention. All of a sudden it gets promulgated and everyone starts panicking. Guys, make a thing, like raise issues. If you have to go on Facebook and raise them, raise them. But just understand, Facebook isn't going to sort your problem out. Uh, you need to actually be intentional. And that's why you've got organizations that you can belong to, where you can submit this, and they're willing to act on your behalf and actually send representatives like Silna and myself to go to these events and speak. So, yeah, be speak, but don't, yeah, and don't be complacent, but don't panic either. And speak at the right places. I think, uh, Bruno, this is what I always say. Um, people hate being governed. Okay, mm -hmm. I see that. But we live in a country of about 60 million plus people. If the country was run on my rules, me, I am telling you, we will live in the most amazing society because I am like my, my two biggest things in life, my personal core values are kindness and, um, and being truthful. So if the world is run on Silna's terms, I promise you we don't need any laws because everybody will be nice to each other, kumbaya, the, you know, 100% country of rainbows and, and unicorns, sadly. That's not how life works. So the fact that you feel you don't need to be governed is the reason why you need to be governed, because the guy next to you doesn't have the same ideas as you. Now, how do we find a place in law we Every 60 million people feel like, okay, like I'm cool with this. It's not going to happen. So it's a bit of a give and take. Yes, we don't like paying tax. Okay, but fair enough. On the other hand, I do love seeing people receiving their SASA grants. I do like having our road start. Yes, there's potholes here and there, and some places more than just here and there. But we need to get money to fix problems. Okay, so if you said Banda about paying tax, uh, you're going to see more mm. potholes, I can promise you. Yeah. Um, so it's a give and take. It's like any relationship, and your relationship with government is not as close. It's not like a relationship with your dad, where you can go to him and say, Dad, I don't agree with you. You need to follow uh, the correct process here through, through the correct channels. But, Bruno, I think you said it perfectly. Just don't complain in the wrong places. Don't don't sit and complain at a family bride. Nobody's going to know about it. If you complain on your family WhatsApp group and send these mass messages back and forth, look what government is doing now. Look at this. No, it's not going to help anybody. But look at this. Let's share this. And uh, Bruno and I will both attend um, this session. Bruno, where did I hide it for us? That's now the uh, act. Where's that one? There we go. Bruno, can you see my... Uh, I can. 
Yeah, yeah, I'd say. So this is actually from the uh, PPA and I'm, uh, the PPRA, the Property Practitioners Regulatory Authority, who has um, uh, uh, the head of legal currently um, as the acting CEO, Delhi. I have uh, the world's respect for her. She is a lovely lady. And the PPRA is actually um, inviting people to sessions to discuss the regulations around uh, the Rental Housing Act. We need to submit uh, those by the 15th of May. The Health Act ones is by the 15th of April, but this one is by the 15th of May, but I can already see we can have an extension on that. The PPRA is asking um, to attend these sessions. So you don't even have to go through all the effort to go online and type, type your own submission. Attend these. Bruno and I will both be attending this one um, on the 21st of April at Birchwood Hotel. And um, have a look at this. I'll share this one as well in the comments um, to, this, uh, to this particular video. Have a look at where it is and um, attend. Get, uh, get involved in our uh, legislation. Get involved in things. Don't, if you're confused, just ask us. Because I have seen especially around the Health Act now, people going completely off their rocker and they're like, government is busy making legislation where they're basically going to use us as test subjects, but uh, we actually have the regulations in front of us. Nobody is making a test subject of anybody. Personally, I uh, have a quite a few opinions about the draft uh, regulations to the Health Act, but with, guess what I did? I went online this morning. I typed a lovely email. I said, guys, these are my concerns. I think somewhere here we might have a few constitutional issues. Please consider my opinion. Worst case scenario, it gets promulgated in a form that might be unconstitutional. Guess what? Then we go to the constitutional court. But if everybody comments through the correct channels, there isn't something like they are trying to extend the Disaster Management Act to have a permanent um, excuse to use COVID as an overreach of government power. No, it's under the, rent, uh, under the Health Act. Uh, like I said, personally, there is quite a few things I, I, I personally disagree with, but I raised my concerns uh, to the right place, and I know it will be heard. And if it doesn't, um, we do in fact have uh, quite a few other channels that we can follow to sort it out. Bruno, do you want to go into detail? Sure. Well, look, so uh, like we always mention, going into specific details uh, really ever helps uh, in the sense that since these are still proposed, it depends on what the viewer's intention here is. Um, if, if the viewer is here to learn about the regulations, I would probably say let's wait um, till after the hearings because you're not going to get anything substantial um, or you're going to get something, you're going to panic over it, um, and then you're going to realize a couple of months down the line that it no longer applies. If you're here because you want to understand the, the implications of something, especially leading up to the event, which is, uh, when was it? On the 21st, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. So even leading up to the event, that we can open the door and just say, look, what are the concerns? Are they rational? Are they not rational? Um, we can have the, 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 the discussions even on PLA on a Wednesday and have a quick, a quick discussion, actually take these and go to the event and um, obviously make the necessary submissions. Uh, so, but from a detailed perspective, I mean, from my side, my only concerns that I noticed were some of the definitions um, and whether, you know, how the definition of landowner, who did this encompass. And uh, the lease agreement wasn't too bad, but I did see a lot of people were worried about its simplicity and the fact that they can't deviate from it, or substantially at least, uh, which I don't necessarily agree with, um, simply because uh, there's this principle in law called substance over form and, and substantially compliance. So what we really do in a lot of situations is more isn't always bad. So you can have a very basic structure that says this underlines the basic human rights or human needs, uh, but you can add to it as long as it doesn't uh, make the consumer's position worse. 
um, then then you're okay with it. So you can be more detailed, more specific um, on what duties or obligations a consumer would have, how many parking bays, whether they need to cl clean the roof. It's you can do that. There's no issue with that. Um, and so I'm not too phased over the lease agreement. I do feel that that um, it can still be explored. Um, it was sorry the it was the interpretation, and there was one more which I cannot for the life of me remember. Um, the disbursements. The, the disbursements, yes, yeah, that's the one, yeah. The lease yeah. fee and the inspection fee, right? And, and yeah, you that's don't right. That yeah, so they, I Maybe mean, because me. I mean, obviously, yeah, everyone's raising, raising concerns. Uh, you know, is it a disbursement? Is an agent then entitled to then charge as a, as a disbursement? Um, as a, and then it goes back to the definition on uh, how the agent actually interacts with the tenant and where the agent's costs are covered. Because we're pretty confident that as lawyers, if you had to come to us and say, draft the lease or draw or do this, we'd be able to send an invoice. And there you go. But now the question is when somebody's acting in agency, a representative capacity as a landlord, is there a disbursement? Are they allowed to charge it? Is it just a way of actually doing it differently? Maybe just changing the process or is it fine? Um, so yeah, conversations around that are worth having. Um, I wouldn't overly panic, especially considering that it's not necessarily always the highest amounts. I mean, you're still getting your commission. Uh, the rent is still being paid substantially. It's not all that bad. But yes, it, it is definitely worth having a conversation over. That's brilliant. And and Bruno, I think uh, I, I just while I was while you were talking, I thought um, to to summarize. Um, I think we've we've covered it pretty well. How how law is made, and the two particular pieces of regulations that that's being talked about right now everywhere. Um, is obviously the the regulations to the uh, to the rental housing act, as well as to the health act. And uh, you mentioned something earlier where you said, if you comment, just make sure you comment rational, so that it can be used to to submit a comment to even the right email address, everything. And you just say, I don't like it because government's corrupt, and I can't trust government. It isn't going to help anybody at all. So if you do mm -hmm. want to comment, make sure you download um, the draft yeah. regulations. I will post um, links to both uh, the, yeah, the so, Health Act regulations yeah. and the, the Rental Housing Act regulations. Have a read through it. Please don't trust what you hear on, on voice notes over family groups and stuff. Um, it, and what you see are a drama. As soon as, soon as you feel like, oh, this makes me so angry, just know it's drama and drama will never carry any benefit. Make sure you comment logically and rationally. You don't have to be a lawyer to say, you know what? Really, my concern is that if the Minister of Health can add any disease to the list of reportable diseases, which might then end up limiting a, a few rights, I feel that is an overreach of governmental power. Say mm. it like that. Don't say, Jokos, remember what we've seen that one time? That's not going to help anybody. Be mm. logical, be rational, mm. and be calm in the way that we, we're handling things. I think the past two years changed the way the world thinks, and the world believes that the more you uh, throw tantrums and just... Uh, you know, go go off your rocker. It's it's okay these days, and it's not okay. It doesn't help with with making law. Uh, what helps is is take a deep breath, read through it, um, and compile proper logical commentary. And please participate. It's like voting. Um, as important as it is to go vote, it's important to keep an eye on on legislation as it comes up. It's not limited to the lawyers sure. of this country to make law. It's uh, yeah. in the, within the power of each and every citizen. And this is what makes South Africa a beautiful country because we have a government and, a, a, and an environment where every single person of the age of 18 can participate in making the laws of this country. Sure. Yeah. So now for president, nee, Bruno, you can be well with done. me. We can well, be well, well done. PLA well done. for president. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm settled. You can do that. I uh, do not want your job. I it's hectic enough to run a law firm, to run a country. I must say, um, he can have that one. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. <laughs> Bruno, what did cool. we miss? Awesome. 
I think okay. I think that just about covers it. So we'll we'll um, as we release the videos and as we have this on Facebook, we'll have the the links. Um, and I think I think approaching it rationally is crucial. I mean, even as PLA, we're not going to sift through um, dozens of ir ir irrational questions or conspiracy theories. And it, um, it's it is just a question of what does it do? Why would it be there? Let's let's put on a different hat um, and not and not be too adversarial. And then figure out well maybe it could be worded better maybe there's different considerations that could actually cater for it at the end of the day it is like a negotiation maybe it doesn't have to be a yes or no there's always a maybe there's always an in-between ground and i think that's a lot more constructive so engage have a look read through it uh, make rational comments and yeah we can always we can always take it from there we might not be able to answer all of them um, but if there is interesting, interesting questions, we definitely love to, to pick them up. Brilliant. I like that. Cool. And I think we left our viewers with, I hope, a slightly more sense of calm. And uh, it's always good to know that you can do something. You're not at the mercy of something that's this massive, overpowering thing. You, you're not at the mercy of anything. Um, you can comment and you do have the power to, to get involved. So do sure. that, and if you struggle, give us a shout. We're more than happy to help. But yes, sure. not conspiracy stuff. We don't like that. We yeah. are lawyers, and for that reason, factual in nature. <laughs> but on that high note, guys, have an amazing weekend, and uh, we'll see you back here again um, on Wednesday for Wednesday. a normal, normal Wednesday webinar. Have a lovely cool. weekend. Great. Cheers. <laughs> Thanks, Bruno. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.